Hey everyone, today we are checking out the Supro Royale. So this is an exciting new amp from Supro, and I've really been playing quite a bit more Supro amps lately. And it started actually a couple years ago when I was doing a lot of tracking for my album. <laughs> that album right there. And I really was favoring my Supro Royal Reverb for it. It was just giving me a, kind of a different take on a familiar tone. It still has the classic American tone that I've kind of grown to love that, you know, when push comes to shove, I'm much more of an American amp fan than a British amp fan. But the EQ and the responsiveness and the voicing, first of all, they're so suited for recording. It's just beautiful. And they sit so well in a mix and they have, you know, they have a fullness to them, but they have a coolness to them, which is kind of different. You know, you hear a lot about amps having warmth. I almost want to say that Supros are cool. There's something about it that just sort of responds to the notes a little differently, and they're just wonderful. And they, again, they record really well, and I've gotten some of my favorite recorded tones using Supro amps. So I've been using more Supro. I, I kind of gravitated towards them a bit more over time. And this is the Royale. Now, this is sponsored by Supro, and I do want to say thank you to Supro. Big thank you for sending this over for me to review. I've also been using the Delta King 12, and you know, um, some of you know I've used some other Supro amps and things. And, uh, this one is kind of an exciting thing that mixes vintage and modern in the best way, because that's something that some companies aren't able to kind of hit right, is, you know, how do you do a vintage-inspired amp but give it modern appointments that players want? So I'll give you a basic overview of this amp and what it does. This is a 50 or 35 watt amp, depending on how you're running it. You can run it class A 35 watt, that's cathode biased, or you can run it class AB 50 watts, and that's grid biased. And there is a noticeable difference in the tonal uh, character and responsiveness between the two. The Class A is very classic Supro. It's got a big, rich, full mid-range. It sounds really fat. And it's got that kind of, that Supro punchiness to it. There's a slight darkness to it. Not in like a, it's not like, oh, it's a muffled amp or anything like that. But there's no harsh kind of trebly frequencies that I was struggling with at all. Because with really bright amps, you know, it, it can be easy to be attracted to bright, bright amps. Because, you know, ooh, the sparkle and everything. But then I always find I'm just fighting off that treble and brightness the whole time. This one just sits nice. It has a nice clarity, but you're not really fighting any sort of ice pickiness or anything like that. The range on the EQ is great, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Now, when you switch to class AB, it actually is kind of more like a Fender sound, almost. It's a little bit more scooped in the mid-range. It's a bit more expansive. It's not quite that same punch right up the middle, that same kind of middle fatness. It's like it's kind of stretched your tone a bit. And again, not in a bad way. It's this big, expansive clean that works really well. It's a little bit tighter. It doesn't quite have the same squish like the Class A would. The Class A kind of has this, you know, squishy, spongy punchiness, whereas the Class AB is more that kind of expansive, bright, edgy sort of tone. 
Both work great with pedals, and uh, this amp is really very much designed to be a pedal platform. It doesn't get terribly overdriven. Now, you can get some really cool overdriven tones with it, but it's not really like, uh, you know, an amp where you're getting a ton of gain from the amp. This is more like a classic amp, which kind of gets clean to sort of a vintage style overdrive. Now that brings me up to some of the cool features. The first of which is that it has a foot switchable boost and the foot switchable boost gives you a nice little kick in the pants right when you want it. And one of the things I will say about it is it actually one of the better, if not best representations of like what a two amp actually sounds cranked, but at lower volumes. There's something about the boost and the way that the boost hits it where it gives it that clipping, there's almost like a fuzz-like characteristic to it with the, the asymmetrical kind of clipping sound. Because you know, when you crank a tube amp, I, I always get a kick out of it when people say that an overdrive sounds like a crank tube amp, because most overdrives don't. They're way smoother. Whereas when you really crank an amp, it, it can almost sound like a fuzz, really. And the boost on this one really actually captures the tone of a cranked tube amp, but at reasonable volume. So that's really cool. You also have a foot switchable spring reverb, tube driven spring reverb, and it is lush and massive. And it is like having a an external reverb tank. This reverb is way deeper and way lusher than I would have expected. We're going to hear that in a little bit. That has a level and a dwell control. And then this is where you get into a little bit more modern besides the boost. You have a foot switchable effects loop. So that's just absolutely great. Now they all work on different foot switches. So you can actually plug three different foot switches into it. And then you have a bunch of uh, various speaker impedances. So if you want to experiment with cabinets or with other speakers, there's a speaker out that will suit you. Now, as far as styling goes, it's got a really cool style. It's different than your classic Supro. The, the Supros that have been out that I was first kind of getting to know are the ones with that cool blue, almost like denim-y sort of type finish within the silver grill cloth. And then getting into things like the Blues King and stuff, which is based on that really old vintage, almost like TV tweed kind of look. Now this one has this really cool, almost like a TV kind of look. It's not quite with the shape of the grill cloth, but it's got this plain kind of tan grill cloth, which looks really nice. And then the Tolex is this black with these streaks or like a dark slate gray with streaks, I should say. And it just looks really neat. It has a very boutique kind of amp feel to it and reminiscent of some, actually some old Supros that I've seen, some of the actual vintage Supros that I've seen that looked similar to this. So it's kind of, it's got a cool, sleek, modern look that's a little bit different than the other ones, but it's, you know, still kind of got a foot in the history of the company. So let's get back to some tones here. Now, for starters, I want to show you where it kind of gets some great tones if you're going for that mild overdriven or, you know, really wanting to crank it out. The beginning, you heard it, I did have the reverb up a little bit at the beginning, and I was going into class A and using the boost. Now I'm gonna stick with the Telecaster and switch over to class AB, and you'll hear, again, it's much tighter. It doesn't have that same sort of squash, it doesn't have that same sag to it, but it has a nice punchiness to it and would work really great in a band setting to give you a nice present tone. So I'm gonna get overdrive a few different ways here. First, you're gonna hear it on class AB with the boost. Then I'm going to give you a sample clean with the boost off, and then I'm going to kick it with an overdrive pedal. I'm going to kick it with a Keeley Red Dirt overdrive pedal. Keeley and Supro seem to go together quite well. So I'm using that for the video today. So let's take a listen to some of the cool overdriven tones that you can get with this amp. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, now we're gonna switch over to a Les Paul and go to class A. And I wanna start with kind of a, a very silky, fat, but sort of silky, mildly overdriven tone. This does not have the boost on, but I am pushing the preamp because it has a master volume. So pushing the preamp, kind of giving it a little bit of drive, and it just has this, again, silky smooth, but fat, but really, really nice, kind of the picture of a good humbucker neck tone. So let's take a listen here. <laughs> Now we're gonna kick in the boost and turn the amp up a little bit. And with the Les Paul, it really gets some pretty serious drive. And again, really a great representation of what an actual cranked tube amp sounds like. So we've got the same settings, but I'm gonna kick the boost on and switch over to the bridge pickup. So let's hear how this sounds. <laughs> So you hear that sounds massive. That sounds really, really fat and vintage kind of crunch and, and really cool. The one thing about it is, particularly with humbuckers, it is a big sound. It's a big, fat sound with a lot of bottom end. But one of the things, and I mentioned this earlier, one of the things that I like about this amp is that the EQ section is really, really dynamic. And the EQ section gives you full range of being able to use it. So now I'm gonna use that same tone, but I'm gonna cut the bass all the way out. And you'll hear, it, it doesn't make it just sound like thin and plinky. It really just kind of pulls the frequencies that you want to pull, it almost makes it just sound more like a recorded tone, like something you would hear in a song context. So we're going to play again, the same settings on everything else, except I'm pulling the bass all the way off. <laughs> So you can hear how versatile that is. Now, one of the things that's special about this amp is its clean tone. This has magnificent clean tones and we're gonna play several different clean tones. So now I'm gonna go back to the Telecaster on class A, B and give you kind of that big classic American clean tone with some nice reverb. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Now for the Les Paul, I wanna give you two different clean tones that are kind of opposite ends of the spectrum. I'm gonna go with a nice warm jazz tone. And then afterwards, I'm gonna pull the bass again on the clean tone, push the treble a little bit higher and the reverb and give you kind of a vintage slinky blues tone that's uh, kind of reminiscent of some of the old Supro tones. So let's listen to a couple of contrasting clean tones with the Les Paul. Lastly, let's check out this reverb because the reverb gets like crazy, crazy big, way bigger than you would expect for a Supro amp. You know, I, I would expect Supro to have good reverb. This is, again, like having a big spring reverb tank that you're plugging into. So we're going to start with the knobs at noon and then we're going to turn them up a bit and then we're going to get it going all the way up so that you can really hear just how drippity drip drip this thing can do. So that is the Supro Royale, and I was going to make the Royale with cheese joke, but it seems that everybody's doing that joke. Really excited about this amp. Uh, it's a 112, I do want to mention. It's a single 12-inch speaker. It's got a Supro BD-12 speaker in it, which suits the amp really nicely. Again, kind of emphasizes that really big, fat tone, but retaining clarity, but not punching too much highs that are, you know, uncomfortable to listen to. This is, again, it kind of takes a classic Supro amp something from straight out of the 1950s, but then gives it some other features that it might not have had, like the really amazing spring reverb. And then, you know, with all the modern appointments, just makes it an absolute gigging player's dream, particularly if you use a pedal board. But honestly, even if you just want some cool vintage amp tones in a gig setting that are more moldable, more usable in a practicality kind of way, then this is just an awesome amp. I'm really excited about this amp. Um, I'm going to be starting to use this amp more on pedal demos and some other things. So you're going to be hearing a lot more from this amp from me in the future. Please let us know in the comments, what do you think of this one? 
Have you tried this one? Do you play any of the other Supro amps? Supro has been back around for a little while now, and they've actually had quite a few great models. Again, I mentioned the, the Royal Reverb, which I have, I still use, and I still love the Delta King 12, this one, the new Royale. What Supro do you have? What's your favorite? Please let us know. I'm Jack Fawcett. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.